Hi, Gemini. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for March of 2020. This month, Mercury is definitely active, and I'll be talking with you all about that and how it fits with the moons, the full moon, the new moon. Um, but before that, <clears throat> Julia has some things to say about Venus activity, Mars activity, and also Saturn is changing signs this month, and I think that's going to be pretty important. Hey, Julia. Hmm. All right, Gemini. Well, let's start with Venus first. Hmm. She's the planet of art, beauty, pleasure, relationships, and she's going to be entering your 12th house of seclusion and service on March 4th. So that might mean that you're not necessarily in the most social mood, which you usually are, Gemini, uh, because wherever we have Venus is where we find some pleasure. So her being in the 12th house of seclusion means that you actually might enjoy more time on your own. And if you are involved in any altruistic endeavors, you also might feel more pleasure and fulfillment in engaging in them, too. Mm. Um, and the, the uh, Venus can also represent our relationships, too. So being in the 12th house, you might find that there's some things you need to do to really help your partner out at this time, too. Mm. Uh, now, the next planet I want to talk about is Mars. And Mars begins the month in your 8th house of other people's money and intimacy. It's really interesting to think about why these things are so associated with the 8th house because they seem kind of different but if you think about it you know you generally need some type of intimate relationship with the people that you share money with like a family member or a partner so there could be some arguments over money during this transit especially uh, since Mars can be associated with conflict or you could also be driven to gain more money through the people close to you as well and then Mars enters your ninth house of adventure on March 30th that means you could be really driven to go on some type of trip or pursue some consciousness expanding activity during that time. Now, another important thing that's going on this month is we're having the spring equinox, and that happens on March 19th, and the spring equinox is when the sun leaves the very final degree of Pisces and enters the kind of first degree of Aries, which is, you know, a major, major shift in a new cycle. So this um, equinox is going to be occurring in your 11th house of hopes, wishes, and dreams, so that means that you could be really initiating some new long-range goals during this cycle. Um, and then, as Jamie and, uh, mentioned earlier, uh, Saturn is going to be changing signs, uh, and that means that on March 21st, Saturn, when he enters Aquarius, is going to be going into your ninth house. Now, wherever we have Saturn is where we experience some blockages, and as Saturn enters your ninth house of higher education, travel, and adventure, you might be feeling a bit frustrated or blocked in these areas. But Saturn's not just about bringing hard and heavy times to you for no reason whatsoever. Um, it's also the planet of manifestation, too. So if you are in school, um, you might have to work harder than ever. Things might not be easily handed to you, but there is a possibility of good awards and achievement from your efforts. And uh, in general, for everybody else, um, you may be feeling more restless because your freedom of movement and action might be feeling more blocked than ever. Mm. And if that's the case, then use this transit to expand yourself in other ways like uh, take a trip with your mind through a really cool mm -hmm. like um, educational podcast or something of that nature and what's going on with you this month Jamie what do you see you know I want to throw something in there that's a little bit more specific because I think you hit on a point that's really important um, and that is that when Saturn is in a person's ninth house that it might not be the best time to plan trips, you know, and that trips might be fraught with, especially long distance trips, might be really fraught with uh, complications and uh, obstacles, particularly. Um, and turning that energy into developing your higher mind, maybe from your armchair, is probably a pretty good idea. But I wanted to um, let the viewers know how to find out if that's actually happening for you. Because a horoscope is, you know, it's, um, it's designed for a whole subset of people, one twelfth of the whole population, and it's not that personal. So what I want to say is, if you have Gemini rising, then chances are that you have some of the sign of Aquarius occupying your ninth house. And if that's true, then sometime, and I could be very precise if we were in a session and it was one-on-one -on -one and I was looking at your actual chart, 
but I'll just say generally now, sometime in the next two and a half years, Saturn is going to move into your ninth house. And when that happens, um, you'll be entering a period of about two and a half years or so when um, when traveling is, is going to be difficult and, and might even be dangerous. And that's some of why I wanted you to, you know, to know about that and that it is poss possible to find out exactly when that time frame is. And a horoscope, you know, can only tell you so much. Um, okay. <clears throat> so I don't want that. I hope I didn't sound dire. I didn't want that to sound dire, but um, I think it's kind of good to know, you know, and it's information that you can find out. Okay, so, well, obviously, Gemini, I want to tell you about Mercury, right? Because Mercury is your ruling planet, and whether you're a Gemini sun or a Gemini rising, uh, Mercury is something to pay attention to and, and keep aware of, and you probably already know that Mercury goes retrograde periodically and that it's retrograde right now. So um, Mercury went retrograde in Pisces, and uh, Julie and I made a video about the uh, interaction between Mercury retrograde in Pisces and the, um, and the moon at the time in February. Um, and and um, we've also made a video this month to kind of bookend it, uh, which is where Mercury goes direct. That is happening on the 9th, and it's going to be so nice. What a relief because I think we're really going to feel like we're coming out of the fog. And for you, Gemini, in particular, you may feel that when Mercury goes retrograde, it just gets so hard to think clearly. And if you can think clearly, nobody else around you can. And so what a mess it can become. So when Mercury goes direct, it tends to feel good, but particularly to you. And this one features a full moon in Virgo, too. And the, the moon in Virgo just thrives on order. And I think that it's going to be that side of all of us that wants to go into the garage with a giant garbage bag and just like throw out all the old stuff and, and find those, you know, clear and clean edges and corners again and um, get out of the fog, get out of the blur, get out of the mess. And I think that those kind of activities are going to feel really good around March um, as the as the month moves on around March 9th and later. So uh, Mercury Direct is going to feel so much better. Mercury in Aquarius is going to feel really good here in the beginning of the month. And then in the middle of the month, Mercury moves back into Pisces. But it's going to be so much nicer when Mercury is in Pisces direct and speeding up. Then I think that um, is when uh, clarity will finally really come. And, you know, people have a, a bias that, that things are supposed to move forward, that uh, projects are supposed to move forward. We're supposed to be able to make the deadlines that we set. And that is so hard to do during Mercury retrograde. But when it's direct again, business as usual. And that can feel great, especially for you, Gemini. So there's another moon happening this month in Aries. It is a new moon which is something that I usually like to describe as being about um, uh, new beginnings, planting seeds. And this one in particular feels that way even more than usual because it's in the sign of Aries, the very first sign of the zodiac. And, um, and that really brings a feeling of rebirth. And it just ties into some of those things that you said, Julia, about the spring equinox. That's falling in the 11th house, so this might be a really good time to start some new friendships or to bring renewal to old friendships by healing. Now, Chiron is in Aries, nested here between the sun and the moon during this new moon. Chiron is having us on a seven-year healing journey, and it's only in year two of that journey right now, to um, heal the side of us that must assert ourselves, to figure out how to manage our assertion and our aggression, our anger, and how to balance that in everyday life so that we're not just selfishly pursuing what we want, but considering other people too. And so Chiron is healing that stuff, which means sometimes a few painful moments here and there. 
And this new moon is offering a chance to begin again in your friendships. So that sounds pretty nice to me. So this month's topics would seem to be kind of wide ranging. Some of them are in the arena of transformation, your eighth house. Some of them in the arena of friendship, your 11th house. And your birthday isn't anywhere near. So I would say if you wanted to get a reading right now and you felt like something is up for you, it's probably something that could be covered in a natal and transit reading, which is where we can range into any topic whatsoever. We don't have to be limited to just limited to just career or just relationships. We can really spread out, and that might be the right choice if you wanted to get a reading right now. You can find our horoscopes on uh, our horoscope page on our website at pandoraastrology.com slash horoscope, and you can also find them on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology, organized into a playlist for your viewing pleasure. And uh, there you will always find the news of the month organized into playlists and the news of the year. I hope you enjoyed this. We sure enjoyed making it for you. And we'll see you next month and all around the cosmos. Bye. Bye, guys.